Uh, my name is Gary said, my name is Philip Barlow. I'm the director of the religious studies program here at the university. And this will be the second time that the religious studies program has partnered with the new Academy for Temple Studies in um, bringing the symposium to campus. Uh, many of you might have um, been here for our first one in September or October. Uh, uh, Gary will be um, reminding you of some things attached to that and books that are out in the hall, if not all of you have uh, gotten them the proceedings from the former conference. Uh, we'll also be having a symposium on the temple again in the fall, so you can look forward to that with um, details forthcoming as they're worked out. But we're glad in your busy schedules that you were able to join us. Um, I am going to put, are we projecting from this table or anything? It's just a friendly table here. We have just a little bit of artwork table um, here, and I am going to put on that table a yellow sheet of paper or two that during a break or after our proceedings um, this evening, if you would like to be on our mailing list, email list for conferences and speakers, lectures, and symposia that are sponsored by Religious Studies. Um, we'd love to have you do that. We have something that you might want to take note of these dates um, right now if you're not on that email list because publicity will go out about it shortly. But in March and April, we are having a four-part symposium on uh, religious responses to the Holocaust. And on March 7th, coming up very soon, is our first lecture. Um, and that will be by Dr. Emil Karenji uh, from the U.S. Holocaust Museum. He's a research scholar there full time. And he'll be talking about Jewish responses to the Holocaust from spiritual and religious practices to armed resistance. Then on March 28th, we'll be screening the very powerful documentary film called Witness, which um, eclipses the attempt by Steven Spielberg to assemble um, survivors of the Holocaust uh, in, by way of interviews and preserving memory. Um, this is rather a more powerful collection of responses and it includes responses about the annihilation of faith through the event or the retention of faith through the event or the formulation of new faith through the wretched ordeal of the Holocaust. Um, we will have responses from professors Alice Weinrib and Stephen Saporin here on the USU faculty who are experts in Jewish studies, along with conversation with the audience. Then on April 4th, uh, we will have Dr. and Jack. Um, it came to my attention in my head just now that I'm not positive of the pronunciation. Is it, does uh, Dr. Kiel go by German pronunciation, Kiel? Kiel? Kiel. Uh, Dr. Adam Kiel, Emeritus Professor of German Studies at Brigham Young University, will be with us um, to speak about what can Mormons in, and others in the U.S. learn from the case of Mormons in the Third Reich. Uh, Dr. Keel is, as far as I can make out, the um, foremost scholar of um, the famous, in some circles, episode of Helmut Hubner and his group, uh, Hubner was a young Mormon man, um, the youngest um, German to be uh, executed. Um, that'll get a little complicated, but I'll, I won't uh, spend, divert us here with um, qualifications of that, but for resistance to um, Hitler as opposed to being a, a member of an identified target group like homosexuals or gypsies or Jehovah's Witnesses or Jews. Um, and um, 
he, he makes a compelling case for the relevance of that episode, not just the heroism of Hubner, who was excommunicated from the LDS church and beheaded um, by the Nazi regime and later um, reinstituted, his membership in the LDS church was reinstituted. Uh, but it's not just a case of heroism, it's a case where important lessons and applications for our current state um, need to be grappled through. So I hope you have some interest in that, whether you are LDS or not. And then our fourth and final um, entry in the symposium is encountering Dr. Mengele. Uh, Ms. Eva Kaur will be joining us from Indianapolis. Uh, Ms. Kaur and her deceased twin sister were victims, um, among many others, of Dr. Mengele's infamous um, medical experiments on twins. And she um, later, in trying to witness, um, like many others, uh, not let us forget the events and resist those who denied uh, the events and the scope of the Holocaust, uh, in the course of her work, um, she decided to, for herself, not speaking for any other agency or people, to forgive uh, one of the perpetrators and actually issue an amnesty to perpetrators and nations complicit in the perpetration of the crime. Uh, that's both inspiring and controversial, depending on your angle of vision. Uh, there are a number of people not too pleased with her um, efforts that are courageous, even if they're right or wrong, as we judge when we hammer those out. So she has a powerful narrative we'll look forward. These will all happen on Thursday nights, um, either at 6.30 or 7 p.m., so please um, make note of that. Uh, so... The Religious Studies program and uh, is active in public outreach as well as here on campus, and we're delighted to have you uh, with us, um, uh, both, both the Academy for Temple Studies and the Religious Studies program welcomes you, and we look forward to a rich uh, afternoon and evening, and we'll turn this podium back over to Gary.